Hi, it's Karen Crozier. Um, you remember me as doing a lot of funny videos, but there needs to be some informative videos, too. Maybe a little humor here and there, because I did get a gossip bar. 400 million divorce. I have plans for money. Unfortunately, a lot of people, especially one in particular, chose to steal from me, but... I don't know who's good and who's bad. And John Vining, Vining, if I said it right, you were the one person who sent me one dollar back in the day. And I haven't forgotten you. You may get some good karma. I think karma is a good thing. You see, one of the things I wanted to do with money is start a foundation to promote awareness of this horrible disease called Valley Fever. Now, this is insane because I'm in Arizona. I'm not back in the bottom of the pit, the, the Florida, stupidest place on earth. I am in Arizona, where they're aware of this horrible biological weapon, double breathing in the air. Yep, I'm back in Sporeland. The weird thing is, is I am not yet on fluconazole, diflucan. It's an antifungal drug. You'd think I was trying to get heroin or something. No, and I'm not on it. I have cancer, and I'm not on any same medication. I was in the hospital last week again and a fellow was behind me with a limp or something and they're like, here's your oxycodone. That's a pain medication. I'm on Tylenol. I'm like a cancer, brain tumor, valley fever, the most virile fungal parasite known to mankind. It's actually coccidioidal mycosis. I learned the hard way. I was in Florida and didn't know, but I got the book. I went on to um, YouTube and typed in Valley Fever Survivor and up pop videos. Some were done by Dr. Philip, and they also have a book about it. So I ordered the book real quick because I've learned there is no cure, Dr. Laxon. I have no patience for people who want to practice medicine on me. Get it right. No patience. You're uh, in for a shock. Anyway, um, yeah, there's 15 trillion spores in one cubic centimeter. That's a lot. It just takes one spore that you breathe in to die. I almost did. Three months in the hospital, a poor economy. Oh my God, a chest tube in the back. I had no idea. It's like being, getting a gunshot. I spent three months in there. It's horrible. And then six months, or maybe it was three, I don't know. I had a 106.3 degree temperature for two weeks, ran another one about 104.8. It took me a while. I looked back at those videos that I did back in the day, 2009, and it was the innocence bought me. Partially because of that and partially because I hadn't been screwed over by so many people. Holland's County, Florida. That's a fact. Worst place in the entire country. They don't even know. I do. I have plans to make sure everybody knows. Even the police department here, I talked to a sergeant from the Phoenix Police Department where they have to do their jobs. They don't get to go to Dunkin' Donuts and wear a uniform and get their free coffee and donuts. They don't do that. It's really? Yeah. No, the police here do their jobs. Bank robbers, murders. They don't just hassle people. I'm a registered voter. I have documents that prove everything I say is correct. But back to this valley fever. Um, it is in two bioterrorism laws. And during World War II, when the Nazis were imprisoned in the camps down where Florence Prison is, just a little bit from here, they invoked the treaty of the Nazis. And they had to, our government had to move them because they were dying from valley fever. Yet, they don't tell the world about it. Now, I come back to Phoenix. My, my father was a brilliant man. God rest his soul, but um, he was smart. He suggested they test me for this valley fever, and bingo. Now they all know about it here, but the rest of the world doesn't know. It's spreading, it's an airborne thing. You can't see it, you can't wear a mask. It's a biohazard level three which is one below Ebola, which by the way, that's cured. 
Canada cured it already and donated 100,000 doses to the World Health Organization, and I believe they gave them to Africa where it's needed. That's not a problem. Canada is giving out a cure for cancer. I have cancer, but I don't live in Canada where they have socialized medicine. I live in a, I live in a wonderful not country where they want to make a buck off everybody who suffers, and um, that's wrong. I don't believe in that. And I'd like to see that changed. But look at what we have for politicians. We have brilliant Hillary Clinton, then we have morons like this idiot. <laughs> yeah. Did you know he punched his music teacher in the eye when he was in second grade, gave her a black eye because she didn't know jack about music? Of course, he would put it differently. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the president. <laughs> I can buy it. I'm rich. Yeah. Keep that Bermuda Triangle. And <laughs> yeah. And here's your buddy. Here's your buddy. Here's, here's the queen of stupid herself. I love reading them together, but I can't even understand her ziggy zaggy blah 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 blah. Yeah. If you ever want to watch a brilliant movie, check out Game Chance with um, Julianne Moore. Where she does a brilliant impression of Sarah Palin. I wondered in that movie, why wasn't the chick who was training her chosen to run for vice president instead of this moron. It's brilliant. Yeah, I just can't get enough of the queen of stupidity. Tina Fey <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. It's brilliant. But this idiot, I just found out John Meadup <laughs> took up a four-day movie <laughs> and plays Donald Trump. I've got to see this. It's kind of ironic that he would be portraying this idiot that <laughs> I'm trying to say dump Trump. Dump Trump. Dump Trump. He's an idiot. I said that 20 years ago. How is it? You know, I can give him a ton of reasons why Hillary should be present. I, none for this guy. You know, one person, but my, my son. Um, I don't understand why I have custody and because of a horrible circumstance, I had to give mom uh, permission to get medical treatment or whatever, and now it's um, hurting me and getting my son back. Oh, yeah. Trophy wife, trophy wife, uh, make her pass the citizenship test. Even Palin, Joe oh, Biden, uh, no, Biden's stupid. Who's stupid? Australia is a country. It's a continent, you dumbass. But our own college students, I saw something horrifying, can't even tell us who won the Civil War. Um, that was fought in the United States, between the North and the South. I must be a prehistoric dinosaur, dinosaur to know these things, because it was in the last, no, um, two centuries ago. This man right here, he can tell you all about the Civil War. Because he was the best darn Robert E. Lee ever. This is my late father, G. Richard Crozier, a.k.a. Dick. He died at 66. You see, years ago when I was like 20, 30 years ago, my grandmother called, she said, and told me my dad had suffered a brain aneurysm. I'm very close to my father. My mother, no, this man. And... Apparently he had a headache and he drove himself to the hospital even when they rushed him to Syracuse. This was in New York. And they did brain surgery and he lived, thank God. But he had a slight little dent. My dad was a perfectionist. Why would he go to this kind of trouble? He was very famous up there in Virginia. And um, some quack apparently finally, no plastic surgeon wanted to touch it. It was too risky. But one did. And it resulted in my father dying at age 66, three years ago, this September 28th. He never even really got to know his grandson, this little boy, my son Julian. That was probably the last year he lived with me, even in Florida. He wanted me to iron his little shirt. I'm so proud. Now it's, um, well, Grandma's just waiting for you to prove that you're going to die of cancer. That I would lie about something like that before she allows him to come.
he would have normally wanted to come because we were very close. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I found this. June 16th, 1985. World's Greatest Dad. From the undersign for valiantly attempting all manner of home repairs. Try the TVs and electronics. No, Dad, it's perfect. Dispensing wisdom and warmth. Lending a sympathetic ear. Not to mention money and car keys. That probably, well, lunch money. My mom took me from him, too. And for having surrendered your paychecks and impelled your sanity, you have been declared world's greatest stand by your grateful public and are entitled to all rights and privileges thereof, subject to the law, local law, i.e. mom. Bitch. Yeah. There's another famous Robert E. Lee. You can see in some of my flippograms, he had red hair and was kind of a hippie back in the day. But look at that. Yeah. Civil War was between the Union and the Confederacy. It was over slavery. And um, the, the Union was up north, and the Confederacy was down south. It was settled finally in Appomattox because, yeah, the, it was the bloodiest war of all time. And, um, you know, it was won by the North, the Confederacy. I had a situation where I was around some younger people, and asked, is Jimmy Carter still alive? Which he is, and I got to wish him a happy birthday. But, um, they didn't know who. I'm like, Ronald Reagan? No. Gee, I should have asked George Washington, because I can, you know, Roosevelt, and Eisenhower, and Grover Cleveland, and Adams, and I bet Jefferson. And they can't even name a president that was the year before they were born. It's pretty sad what's happening. But, you know, you can use your things, your electronics and stuff to um, research. Matter of fact, check out George Bush's rare band speeches on YouTube and see what you find, especially the black and white ones. It'll scare the hell out of you. I encourage you to check it out. See who is really responsible for the way this country is right now your evil. Seriously, look. Anyhow, um, I'm in a somber mood because I'm having electronic issues. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is pretty sad. Oh, oh, this isn't all of them. Oh, this is different. I'm using an iPad, but oh, top spots. Somebody said they needed a cell phone. I said, oh, I can help you out with that. Yeah, I've got more over there, too. Another iPhone, or more phones. I've gone to computers. Uh, I've, I've got so much crap, I'm lost. All because somebody took my iPhone 5C and put a VPN device from Verizon, hooked me up with a computer I didn't really want. Bam, the Wi-Fi, the VPN device. Hack, 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 hack. Yeah, you guys need to be careful. Before you install your apps as to what permission you're giving out. I read Google's private, <laughs> you know, if you want to read Google's privacy policy and probably Facebook's too, you might as well as pack a lunch and plan on spending a week. But when you get to the end, you find out the truth. You ain't got no privacy. Try reading George Orwell's 1984. No, do it. Learn about Newspeak. Because this no cursive writing. Oh, suddenly the Declaration of Independence doesn't say uh, you have freedom of speech. It says you have to work for free every Tuesday or whatever the hell they want. News speak. Read it and wake up. I'm sorry if I seem um, mean. I don't mean to be. I just want people to wake up and pay attention. Thank you.